While it is important to answer the question, why is family-centered care important, it is also important to understand what makes up a patient and family-centered medical home. The medical home model, developed by the American Academy of Pediatrics in the 1960s, has become more defined in recent decades. A medical home is defined by the AAP as a source of ongoing routine health care in the community where providers and families work as partners to meet the needs of children, youth, and families. The medical home assists in early identification of special health care needs, provides ongoing primary care, and coordinates with a broad range of other specialty, ancillary, community-based, and related services. According to the Catalyst Center, a national center of the Maternal and Child Health Bureau, the provision of care in a medical home indicates progress toward the development of systems of care that are family-centered, community-based, coordinated, and culturally competent. It is important to remember that in order to create a high-performing care coordination program within the medical home context, management, medical staff, and non-medical staff have to work together to create effective teams of care and extend the network of support for staff serving in the roles of care coordinators. Care coordination is an evolving term. It is defined by the needs of families and by practice structures. Care coordination is a team approach, and its structure will vary from practice to practice. It adapts to what needs to be addressed at that moment. The important fact is that it addresses all aspects of a child and youth with special health care needs, including epilepsy. The Maternal and Child Health Bureau defines care coordination as services that promote the effective and efficient organization and utilization of resources to assure access to necessary comprehensive services for children with special health care needs and their families. Care coordination addresses interrelated medical needs, social, developmental, behavioral, educational, and financial needs. Care coordination is the centerpiece of patient-family-centered medical homes. It is about providing the support and navigation strategies that make the system work. It is important to understand how care coordination differs from case management and disease management, but at the same time to know how these three roles have overlapping functionalities. At a high level, care coordination refers to patient and family-centered team-based care that is designed to meet the needs of children and youth while engaging families. Case management programs generally enroll individual patients with complex combinations of medical problems, combinations that put them at high risk of adverse medical events and that may require interventions tailored to the specific needs of each enrollee. These interventions could even include such steps as coordinating transportation to medical appointments or teaching family caregivers to identify problems that require medical attention. Disease management programs have been focused on treating a defined set of patients with specific diseases, particularly patients with prevalent and relatively well-defined chronic illnesses like coronary artery disease, congestive heart failure, diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, and end-stage renal disease. These programs often rely on the similar needs of their enrollees, which allow standardized approaches to be used. Accessibility is a key component of effective care coordination. Accessibility means having access to appropriate coordinated medical and non-medical services, ongoing communication with the practice team, including the providers and care coordinators, timely information such as test and imaging results, medication changes, and potential side effects for medication, referrals to specialists and community resources, health education about the condition and appropriate treatment for the patient, self-care management support, and assessment for the patient and the family, advocacy from care coordinators and providers, and the support to become a self-advocate. Advocacy is an important part of the process because families develop skills and knowledge that helps them navigate the system and opens doors to access. 
Other markers of accessibility include the availability of same-day appointments as well as flexible hours, like after hours and weekend clinic appointments. Having calls returned in the same day and having a clinician available during office hours to provide clinical advice. Availability of a web portal to get information and make appointments. This is a patient portal where families can request appointments, view the labs and imaging results, access immunization records, and other important patient information. Communicate in a variety of ways that works best for the patient and family. For example, by phone, email, text, and in person. Ability to access information about referrals from online resources. And finally, physical access to facilities for children and youth with special health care needs and their families. Care coordinators are also the connecting bridges between families and providers. They are the go-to person for information about care, which means they are informed, accessible, and willing to respond. They are also facilitators of services. In that role, they serve as teachers, mentors, connectors, and in some cases, clinical experts, which happens most often if a nurse or provider serves as the care coordinator. They are the champions of a patient's and family's needs. Every practice needs a champion, and care coordinators are that champion for their patients and families. They are tireless advocates. As care coordinators, one of the priority goals is for them to be the biggest advocates for their patients and families. Ultimately, care coordinators are liaisons to the patient, family, medical team, and community organizations. Now, how do we put all of these elements into practice and build a strong care coordination team? By creating an algorithm that outlines the steps you can take to build the practice team. For instance, getting organized to form the practice team, conduct organization assessments to identify gaps that would need to be addressed, getting together to brainstorm different ideas, promote team growth, and identify potential challenges throughout the process and then creating a process to effectively put your team into place.